Hi, this is Live Wire Critics, and we've just been to see The Edge of Love on the 8th of July. And my name's Liam. My name's Alice. My name's Jane. I'm Colin. Jonathan. And Jack. It's a, it's a film with Keira Knightley, Sienna Miller, and they're both in love with Welsh poet Dylan Thomas. And as such, many things happen. It involves a lot of crying, and that's about it. <laughs> if you've seen Atonement, you've seen The Edge of Love, except it's more boring. The link with Atonement was something I thought about as well, because it really was the same style, the same, nearly the same story, just a different kind of protagonist, really. It shares Keira Knightley and a war, <laughs> <laughs> except the war scenes aren't very interesting, and they're really short, and he comes back all shell-shocked and so we don't really sympathise with him that much because we didn't see much war. I was hoping he was going to get shot like in the plane. <laughs> that would have made it a lot better for me. But I didn't really like the story itself, but you can't really criticise it because it actually happened. Dylan is married to girl number one, but girl number two still loves Dylan. But in an attempt to try and dissuade herself from it, she marries a guy who gets sent off to war. He comes back and it's... All a bit emotional. Babies crying everywhere, all the time. <laughs> this is pretty much another good night and good luck. What we've got is great cinematography, we've got great performances on the whole, we've got great direction, but there isn't any substance to the film to make you enjoy it or engage with the characters. And so you leave the cinema feeling ripped off, even though I didn't pay for this film. <laughs> <laughs> I think the fact that I can't really think of anything to say kind of says it all. I just kind of left thinking not much really. And at the time of watching it, it, it did like bring out an emotion, but after there's just not really much. It's just really when you're watching it, it's there and then it's gone kind of thing. I think there were good parts to the film, like there were parts when I was really engaged with it, but these parts are really like little. Right. Some parts like at the end it was quite inter it is sort of tailed off a bit at the end the beginning was okay because you're just getting into it but there was it was too slow moving i think they should have like moved it up a bit one thing i found quite interesting is that recently there's been a lot of controversy about smoking in films and there was like articles about it saying <laughs> that they should ban smoking in films because it's a bad influence for children and they'll take up smoking and all this and especially as this was a british film i just thought it was great that there was just smoking in every single <laughs> scene, you know, even in the bath. Even in the bath yeah. It was quite a long film, so make sure you sort of get comfy to start off with, so you don't like rush all around during the film, which is quite irritating for other people. Or maybe you might want to start off uncomfy and then you might want to leave, because it's all pretty and everything's done nice, but to no avail really. I think I'd never watch it again with intent. It, it was on like Channel 5 at 1 in the morning. If it was like Jean-Claude Van Damme, then maybe, but I just wouldn't, wouldn't watch it. Well, this is one of the problems with British films as a whole, and what we get is a lot of very samey kitchen sink dramas, which we're all good at. We're all good at kitchen sink dramas, and we all get to see them while everyone's crying and families come together. But if you really want to see a better British film, you can't really find it here. Um, Atonement was good, see Atonement instead. Oh, there were some terrible Welsh accents as well. And the only one who didn't have a Welsh accent was Dylan Thomas. Well, I think you might be able to work out what we thought of the film from this podcast. <laughs>